Good evening and welcome to Chicago Tonight on this Wednesday, March 13th. It's about time we invest on the west side. Two giant and much debated developments get the green light amid a tense city council meeting. Fifth Ward candidates Alderman Leslie Harrison and activist William Calloway are here to talk about the issues in this hotly contested race. I just played jump rope. That's what I did as a kid. And a new generation of Chicago girls learns the ropes of double dutch. All that and more next on Chicago Tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Phil Ponce. Not cleared for takeoff. Big news for some airline travelers. Brandis Friedman has that story and more of what's making news in Chicago tonight. Brandis. And Phil, the United States is joining more than 40 other countries in grounding all 737 MAX 8 airplanes made by Chicago-based Boeing today. That's in the wake of an Ethiopian airliner crash that killed 157 people this week. President Trump first announced the plan this afternoon. The United States has the greatest record in the world of aviation, and we want to keep it that way. So I didn't want to take any chances. We didn't have to make this decision today. We could have delayed it. We maybe didn't have to make it at all. But I felt, I felt it was important, both psychologically and in a lot of other ways. And shortly after that announcement, the Federal Aviation Administration said new information led to this change. It said both new evidence from the crash site as well as new data from satellite-based tracking of the plane's flight path pointed to similarities with the crash of a Lion Air 737 MAX 8 flight in October. In a statement, Boeing says it still has full confidence in the safety of the planes but supports this proactive step out of an abundance of caution. Election Day is less than three weeks away, and now it's all official. The Chicago Election Board has set the ballot for the April 2nd runoff for mayor, treasurer, and 15 aldermanic wards. Lori Lightfoot will be first ahead of Tony Preckwinkle. Candidates who won more votes in the first round, they get that top position. That means in the treasurer's race, Melissa Conyers Urban will be listed before Amaya Pawar. Among the aldermanic runoffs, sixth ward incumbent Roderick Sawyer faces Deborah Foster Bonner after missing an outright victory by just four votes. And in the 15th ward, incumbent Ray Lopez faces Rafael Yanez after missing a first round win by just 16 votes. And if you already know who you're voting for, early voting starts this weekend at the Loop Super Site downtown and in all 50 wards on Monday. The Board of Elections says yes, this year's runoff timeline is tighter than in 2015, with the period between the election and the runoff being seven days shorter. Uh, the Board of Election calls it a fluke in the calendar. And the two candidates for mayor today focused on crime and violence in Chicago. At a forum hosted by the Institute of Politics and the Crime Lab at the University of Chicago, the two appeared in separate back-to-back 45-minute -back interviews discussing the city's homicide clearance rate and paying for additional investments in both the police department and neighborhoods. The two candidates also weighed in on additional training for police officers and the controversial Public Safety Academy on the city's west side approved today in city council. We have to be thinking smart about the way that we make these big investments in a community that is so resource starved. We definitely need to invest in a facility to support our police and firefighters. And that's not the, that's not the concern. It's whether or not we need a $95, $95 million uh, new building at that location. And you can see the candidates for mayor here on Chicago Tonight one week from tomorrow, Thursday, March 21st, in our mayoral forum. You can also see that program on our website, Facebook, and YouTube, and it'll be simulcast on WBEZ Radio. As for the weather, breezy tonight with periods of showers and possibly a thunderstorm with a low of just, well, around 53, and then mostly cloudy tomorrow with isolated showers and a high near a balmy 65. And a remind, reminder that you can get Chicago Tonight streamed on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, wttw.com slash news. You can also watch via podcast and the PBS video app. Now, Phil, back to you. Thank you, Brandis.
Two major and controversial items got the full city council vote today in Mayor Emanuel's second to last meeting. A majority of aldermen voted to pass both the $6 billion Lincoln Yards project and also the $95 million police training academy in the face of some very vocal opposition. Parrish Schutz was there. Paris, how did the votes break down? Well, first, Phil, on that police training academy, city council approved an $85 million contract to a firm called ACOM to design and build it in the North Lawn neighborhood. Now, City Council approved this development by a 38 to 8 vote. This despite some very vocal opposition and tense moments throughout the day at City Hall, beginning with protests before the meeting that took place in the lobby, outside the building and inside the council chambers. As you see there, tense moments and standoffs with police and protesters. Aldermen and community groups in opposition claimed that this $95 million would be better spent on neighborhood programs, but supporters say they believe the West Side desperately needs a development like this. I'm asking you to support something for the, not only the 37 ward, but, but the entire city of Chicago. We have a right to have public safety as being a priority. Every alderman on the west side won the election. Every alderman on the west side, every, every, every alderman, Every alderman on the west side support this police academy. Let's stop this measure and let's instead invest that money in our neighborhoods and let's get it right once and for all. There's a lot of passion, but not the passion that you're just reporting. I'm sorry. There's passion for people that are for this. And passion's okay. And I know, like other public investments, it brings private investment with it, job opportunities with it. Paris, another controversial development the Lincoln Yards project, which has gone through seemingly endless numbers of <laughs> steps, uh, also came up today. What happened? Yeah, Phil, we've done a few stories on all these regulatory steps. Just a that few. Lincoln Yards has had to go through. This today was the final hurdle, at least for the project to go ahead and get built. City Council approved the zoning change on that 56 acres of land along the Chicago River between Armitage and just south of Fullerton Avenues, right where the old Finkel Steel building used to be uh, right in between Bucktown and Lincoln Park. Now proponents of this say that the plans have been vetted and vetted through dozens of community meetings, but opponents say it is the wrong scale for a project in that neighborhood. Every one of the changes that we have seen since this proposal was introduced in July is a direct result of community input, suggestions to make improvements, and requests to make this a better plan. We welcome development. I, like Alderman Gaza, support the trades. We want it. But it doesn't have to be through a handout. As you were just mentioning to, Phil, mentioning to me, Phil, there are several buildings in this development of six, around 600 feet. 600 feet is the cap. So that's all cleared to go. They can break ground, the developer Sterling Bay. What is not cleared yet is that upwards of a billion dollars in TIF money. Could be the largest TIF district ever in the city of Chicago. That has to be approved separately. Likely it will be taken up in the next city council meeting in April um, after the mayoral election, but while the incumbent mayor and aldermen are still around. So in other city council business today, uh, aldermen approved public subsidies to help renovate a couple of very old historic theaters the Congress Theater on Milwaukee Avenue and the Uptown Theater over on uh, Broadway in Uptown. Paris, earlier today you tweeted that there was a, a strange vibe at City Council today. What were you referring to? There, there is, it's a very strange atmosphere, Phil. You have some longtime aldermen that have lost their jobs. They've been defeated in re-election outright. Others in contested runoffs. Two that were not there today who are under federal indictment or investigation. There you see one of the people under investigation, uh, Alderman Ed Burke, talking to the current Finance Committee Chairman, Alderman um, Pat O'Connor. One of the aldermen that has not been seen in weeks, either in his ward or in City Council, is Alderman Danny Solis. He has skipped all business since news broke that he had worn a wire on Ed Burke and a seal in the federal search warrant affidavit that outlined a laundry list of alleged corrupt activities that Solis was thought to be engaged in. That was lifted. That seal was lifted today by a federal magistrate judge. This after the Chicago Tribune fought to get it unsealed. 
earlier, weeks earlier, the Chicago Sun-Times had discovered this search warrant after the seal had accidentally been lifted on it, and it was sealed up right away. So the Chicago Tribune fought, said that's not fair. It's, it's out in the news now, so this should be lifted. Thus, the seal on that entire document now outlining the things Solis has allegedly done and him wearing a wire on Alderman Burke, that is lifted. Solis acknowledged as much today in a statement through his attorney saying uh, that, that he's doing what he's doing for the sake of the city of Chicago, but asked everyone to respect his privacy. Now, Mayor Emanuel was asked whether he thought Solis should resign outright or, or return pay because he has effectively not been on the job since this broke. Mayor Emanuel declined to answer that but said that residents in that ward have to wait three more weeks and they're going to have a new alderman because of the election. Paris, thank you. And up next, a face-off between the candidates running for fifth ward alderman. Just under three weeks away from Chicago's April 2nd runoff elections, tonight we continue our series of candidate forums with the race for 5th Ward Alderman. The 5th Ward includes all or parts of Hyde Park, South Shore, Greater Grand Crossing, Woodlawn, and Jackson Park Highlands. There was a three-way battle in the race for 5th Ward Alderman. It's now down to two candidates. In ballot order, those candidates are five-term incumbent Alderman Leslie Hairston, who's a member of City Council's Progressive Reform Caucus. Hairston was first elected as Alderman in 1999. And community organizer William Calloway, he's known for his efforts in the release of the dash cam, dash cam camera footage of the 2014 local McDonald shooting last year. Callaway ran for state representative of Illinois 25th district and welcome both to Chicago tonight. Uh, Alderman, if I can begin with you as we just heard Parrish report on what happened um, today at City Council and you voted against the Westside Police Academy. How come? Um, I had been meeting with uh, some of the young people and I had been listening to my constituents and they made some very salient points and um, so I decided that this was the right thing to do, that we needed to slow this down. And um, th there are other ways that we could be doing this kind of investment. William Calloway, did you support, do you support the, uh, the, the p new police academy building? Uh, no, I do not. I would have voted against it. And I'm, I want to push back a little bit against the incumbent. I think it's fair to say that she voted against it today, but that's only because of the pressure of the activist community that I come from and she might she has made some problematic votes in the past but she might vote it in favor for this today but she has voted for 50 uh, school the closure of 50 Chicago public schools she has also, also vote voted for, for several of the several schools. mental health clinics as well and these are the these are the type of votes that we need to make sure that we look at when it comes to the incumbent. Quick response Alderman uh, on the vote to close schools and mental health facilities? Well, actually, I negotiated. They were initially going to close 12. We, we had got negotiated down to six. So I actually, that is incorrect um, and uh, did not vote to close the public schools. Right. As well, a matter of fact, I, I went and protested at each of those hearings at, before the board. Uh, let's talk about something else that's very much in the news regarding aldermen, and that is the whole notion of aldermanic privilege. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie Harrison, yeah. are, are you in favor of keeping aldermanic privilege, whereas the alderman of a ward has um, prime power in terms of new developments? I, I think absolutely. That's exactly what we're, we are elected to do. If I look at my business district and the businesses that we've been able to bring, it's because we are able to do it and because the people have said that they want this. So if we look at my grocery store, um, if we look at the movie theater, if we didn't have control over that and we let somebody else do it, like a council and it was a business that we didn't want, then we would be ceding everything and not doing the will of the people. William Calloway, should uh, automatic prerogative continue to exist? 
I, th I think we should explore options on whether or not that uh, it should exist. But far as a grocery store, listen, we're entering our sixth consecutive year with no grocery store. On April 2nd, when the voters go to the polls, we will not have a grocery store. There's no theater as well. A in addition to that, in 2017, the incumbent introduced an ordinance to downsize the 71st Street corridor, which would have gave her all power for any developers and any, any entrepreneurs or businesses to come through her. What happens with that is it opens the doors for kickbacks, bribery, and corruption. Uh, how about that, uh, uh, Leslie Harrison? In terms of attracting uh, attracting grocery stores, uh, it's we there are parts. On, we closed on the grocery store. They're in their in their building and out. But it's really funny that you should talk about just no visibility. The, well, for it's that. funny that you keep talking about money um, when you haven't bothered to file any of the, the uh, A ones that are required when you re when you get money. How are you going to be a lawmaker when you don't even follow the law? Well, but how about the issue of uh, grocery stores? Yes. Was was there a, uh, is the need being met now? The need that exists in your ward? Well, there is there is always a need for more grocery stores. If you look at cities like Naperville, where there is about uh, one grocery store for every 11,000 people, and you look at a city like Chicago, where there's only uh, one grocery store for every 130,000 people, you can see uh, how great of a disparity it is. And yes, um, I, am, I am pleased that I had to do this grocery store. You know, last time I ran, they said, oh, well, you don't have a grocery store. This time I'm running, I got a grocery store. No you grocery can't have store. it both ways. Let me, let, me, yeah, let me get some pushback about the A1s. As we know about law. A1s are the reporting requirements. Yes, right? only when you receive a donation of $1,000 or more. I am proud to say that we have ran an absolute grassroots do grassroots campaign. Unlike unlike the incumbent who has who have through her tenure received thousands, hundreds of thousands of money from developers and corporations. I have pledged since I, I decided to run, and I will continue that pledge when I'm elected, that I will not that I will not accept any donations from any developers, any corporations, unlike the incumbent. How about uh, banning outside employment for aldermen? Now, William Calloway, uh, your response first, please. I believe that this is a full-time job. I believe that we have to treat it like a full-time job. The incumbent attendance rate in city council is 49%. All right, let's get a quick response to Leslie Harris. Okay, Harrison, so he uh, just doesn't know his facts. <laughs> uh, my attendance at city council it's 49%. Um, is, no, WBZ no, reported no, you're 49%. Not at city council. You're not, 0% you might be talking in the about ward. Committee. You need you're, to learn you're in how the zero percent in but the anyway, ward. 49%. An, in answer to your question, yes. um, can you repeat that question? Well, the, the question <laughs> had to do with whether all of them should be allowed to have outside employment. Well, I think, I think do you that have outside employment? I do work with law students, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I have nothing that conflicts with um, this job. And I think that there should be measures in place that, that they should not. Um, have any conflict. I think what we're seeing and some of the proposals that we put into city council uh, will do that. But um, yeah, if I, if I, if I want to knit hats and sell them for the holidays, I should be able to do so. And uh, as uh, Paris reported earlier, uh, Danny Solis, uh, alderman uh, of the 25th Ward issued a statement today through his, uh, through his attorneys. Mm -hmm. And in part it says, Mr. Solis has decided to cooperate with the federal government to continue to serve the city of Chicago's best interest. Uh, that is wearing a wire. Did Danny Solis do the right thing? Yes, he did. You think he did the right thing? I think fighting and, and tackling corruption is the right thing, but ultimately that's why I believe that we should have term limits and recall legislations for a lot of aldermen, such as uh, for the incumbent who has been here for 20 years. So we need to make sure 20 years is too long for anybody, and, and I think as long as you're there that long, it will open you up to complacency and corruption. 20 years too long for somebody to be in city no, council? No, it's not. We just celebrated at Burke's 50th anniversary, but I, I'm glad you talked. <laughs> I have never, I have <laughs> never been in my 20 years associated with any corruption. Um, I follow the law. I am a lawyer by trade. I have a license attached to my name. But the thing I, I find that interesting, you particularly since you're running a political office, out of excuse the not-for-profit. Excuse me, uh, he, he said that you've never been caught for corruption. That's the difference. That's the difference. Response to that? I'm, I'm not corrupt. I have not been corrupt. But ask him why he hasn't paid his, his, his tickets. Why, why does he skip out? Do you have, uh, are there problems with your tickets? Uh, what are they, parking tickets? If I do have parking, I don't, uh, parking tickets, no. What were you referring to, I'm sorry? I'm t well, let me see. We've got a list here, safety belts, expired meters. We've got, we've got a list of, of things that he has so, that so, are outstanding old payments to the city. Listen, Leslie, 
as we know, you cannot run for office with outstanding debts to the city. So I would not even been able to be on a ballot without having outstanding debts. She's reaching. Uh, and as far as the Obama Presidential Center, uh, there are calls in, in some parts of the community for a community benefits agreement. Leslie Hairston, uh, that center would be nearby. Your thoughts on a community benefits agreement? Well, I have never opposed a community benefits agreement. The foundation has said that they did not support one. Um, I am still pushing the foundation to do a community benefits agreement. I've done, um, I've written some guiding principles that have been put in. I have also added to the ordinances themselves um, the city's standard uh, MBE, WBE numbers, but in addition added the, the foundation's uh, re requirement or goal to accept 50% MBE, WBE, which exceeds anything that any proposed CBA has 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 come out. Uh, the other thing that I've done is I've... Well, let me let me get uh, let me get Mr. Okay. Uh, Mr. Calloway's response real quickly to that. Uh, your position on a community benefits agreement for the Obama Presidential Center. I support it. I think that's something that the community wants and needs. Um, the 5th Precinct and the 5th Ward uh, voted unanimously, 88% 80, on the refer referendum correct. that we should have a CBA. Um, I think it's, it's quite ironic to say that she supports it. We all know that her campaign contributor, Leon Finney, um, is, is not a supporter of it. And it's one of the reasons that the CBA is important because it protests the spikes in rent. Um, from community members. Leon Finney, one of her con uh, campaign contributors, is spiking the Jackson Park Terrace tenants' rents as we speak, $100 to $300. Quick response, Harrison? Well, he, he's definitely wrong, and, and take that from somebody that takes money from a Republican. Oh but there, there are measures that have been put in place um, in the ordinance itself that are tied to um, um, the market and so that we don't know exactly what the spikes are going to be. I've been working with the organizations, the South Shore Chamber of Commerce, to put in place a neighborhood stabilization plan, which I think is needed. We are out of time, but real quickly, have you endorsed somebody from the area? Yes, I have. And you've endorsed? Tony Preckwinkle. And you've endorsed? Lori Lightfoot. That's where we'll have to leave it. Leslie Harrison and William Calloway, thank you both for being here. Thank Very you. much appreciated. Thank you. And we are back right after this. Don't miss one of our stories. Get them all delivered to your desktop or mobile device with a subscription to the WTTW News Daily Briefing. Go to WTTW.com slash Daily Briefing and sign up. In decades past, the tick, tick, tick of double dutch jump ropes kept the beat on city w sidewalks and parks and also helped keep the girls who played it active and healthy. Over the years, the sport fell out of fashion, but now a Chicagoan says it is time to bring double dutch back to a generation of girls that it skipped. She's betting that double dutch's quick footwork and hypnotic rhythms will rope Chicago girls back into the game. We recently brought you this story, and here is Brandis Friedman with another look. For many black girls growing up in the 70s and 80s, summer in the city sounded like this. Oh, I love double dutch. Um, <laughs> as a kid, I jumped outdoors on the concrete uh, during the summertime. We jumped from the morning until night, all day, every day. Uh, if there had been an NBA for double dutch, I would have been a star, right? Ayana Haroon says her warm memories of playing double dutch jump rope as a child lured her back as an adult and inspired her to start teaching double dutch to a new generation through her organization, Black Girls Jump. <laughs> double dutch originated on the streets of New York in the 1940s. It migrated to other urban centers like Chicago, where it was an activity especially popular among black girls like Haroon. So you learn how to double dutch at 10 or 11, it's like, oh wow, I'm a black girl, right? This is like, <laughs> this, this is cultural expression that I find that the children take pride in. Karun says she returned to Double Dutch because she had grown bored with running to keep in shape. And I was like, oh, what can I do for fitness that's fun? I want to do something social. And I said, well, why don't I just play jump rope? That's what I did as a kid. And I went to the hardware store and I bought a plastic clothesline and I just took my clothes on to the park as if I was 12 years old. And I just asked people if they wanted to play jump rope with me. And in an hour, there were probably 40 or 50 people out there playing jump rope. Energized by that day in the park, Haroon began to organize events for black women to jump back in to Double Dutch for fun and fitness. We noticed that mothers will bring their daughters to the events. 
So the moms wanted their daughters to also learn how to jump rope. Seeing girls jumping with their mothers gave Haroon a new focus. Through black girls jump programs in schools and parks, she shows the ropes to girls like ninth grader Michaelia Shakes at Harlan Community Academy. The hardest thing for me in jumping is getting in the rope. Like my first try, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get in two ropes at the same time? Black Girls Jump also holds workshops like this one at Ring of Hope in the Grand Crossing neighborhood. Here, ambassadors from New Jersey's International Double Dutch League are training coaches for Black Girls Jump with a goal of building teams in Chicago to participate in regional and national double dutch competitions. IDDL coach Kyasia Max McCarthy says she doesn't remember a time when she wasn't jumping. I've been coaching for 20 years, so I think I've been jumping for maybe... Don't make me sick. <laughs> It's an awesome outlet for young people, especially people in urban areas. And she says that like other sports, Double Dutch teaches discipline, structure, and selflessness. Turning is the heartbeat of the rope. It does not work without an awesome turner. They're okay with not being in the rope. They're okay with just helping their teammate out, you know? Michaelia Shake says you can add perseverance and teamwork to that list. We encourage each other to like, keep going. And when we cheer people up, Everybody feels the happiness, the joy around, so we all get to be jolly jumpers. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Brandis Friedman. And since the story aired a few weeks ago, Black Girls Jump has added more after-school programs and is offering a free weekly double dutch fitness class. You can find details on our website. And that is our show for this Wednesday night, abbreviated to bring you Chicago on Vacation with Jeffrey Bear. And believe me, you will not want to miss it. And don't forget to stay connected with us by signing up for our daily briefing. And please join us tomorrow night live at 7. Aldermanic candidates Deb Mel and Rosana Rodriguez face off in our 33rd Ward Runoff Forum. And from mirror and ghost to bronchitis and haberdashery, these are just some of the words CPS students could face in tomorrow's City Spelling Bee. Now for all of us here at Chicago Tonight, I'm Phil Ponce and I thank you for watching. Good night. Closed captioning is made possible by Robert A. Clifford and Clifford Law Offices. Robert Clifford is a co-chair of the fundraising committee for events marking the 200th anniversary of the courts of the Northern District of Illinois.